and we're live on Bill Dragons or Healers Roundtable. Just checking. Sorry, everyone, for coming on late. We had some technical difficulties, but we got it all situated. We're just making sure we're going live on not only our Dual Dragons page, but our, also our Healers Roundtable page on Facebook. So just give us a moment as we... Oh, there we go. On Healers Roundtable now. Perfect. So with that, let me go ahead and put up the slides. And make sure to add the Zoom link. Make sure to add the Zoom link so then that way if anyone would like to join in via Zoom, you have that opportunity to do that. Let me just go ahead and put up the slide. So welcome everyone, welcome to our three day course on recharge, reflect and reconnect. Um, if anyone on the live can write down if I'm frozen, because I'm seeing myself frozen on the screen, I'm going to go on, on to my other, I'm just making sure everyone can hear me. Okay, I'm not frozen. This is my phone. Okay. If you guys have any comments, make sure to post them on our comments below. And if not, join in via Zoom to be able to participate. So again, welcome everyone uh, for our three-day course, Recharge, Reflect, and Reconnect, Dual Dragons. And so I'm just gonna do something real quick because the fan here is a little too loud. There we go. Sorry about that. So again, today we're gonna to be talking about recharge, how to recharge ourselves. And so before we do that, let me go ahead to the next screen and just introduce ourselves. We are Dual Dragons. My name is Rebecca and my husband JB is on the other screen. And he's the one taking care of the technical issues that we had earlier. So we are both neuromuscular therapists. We're also known as the muscle whispers. We are self-healing facilitators and also holistic wellness consultants. A lot of people always ask us, that's such a broad title. What does that mean? What that, what, what that means is when we work on our clients, if there's something else that we feel that they need a service of another kind, we will find a way, person or source to be able to help them in their healing journey. So we have a huge networks of many people we've met so far that are, are facilitators in healing in other aspects with other modalities. So we consult them to help them find the best approach for their healing journey. And so, can you put yourself on mute, my love? It's a little loud. And then, so our, e our website is dualdragons.com and our email is jbr at dualdragons.com and also our number that you could call or text to, That's this is our business number, 949-942-1428. And we're mobile. You could either come to us in our healing room here that we have 
or we could go to you, whatever is more um, comfortable for our, our clients or whoever addresses for our services. And so today we're going to be talking about recharge. What do you do to recharge? And I'm going to ask my husband, what does he do to recharge? Okay. Oh, there's some audio issues. So again, if you can't hear me, please let us know. And then let me just. And our lovely verb, uh, maybe that we're uh, babysitting for the time. I know. <laughs> As I said, my name is JB, and one way that I, there's many ways that you can recharge. There's no one perfect way for anyone. Everyone has different values. Everyone has different perspective, and everyone moves differently. Does everyone like the same music? No. Does everyone like the same type of movie genre? No. So why would there be one specific way you could recharge? Mm -hmm. There's many different ways. I do meditation, because since my first deployment back when I was in the military in 2006, I've been waking up every hour or so, which some people will consider restless sleep. And I just got used to it since 2006. It's already 2021 at this time. So I kind of adapted to that. So that doesn't, the sleeping does not help me recharge. What helps me recharge is for me, meditation, whether it's closing my eyes, listening to audio, whether it's just closing my eyes and shutting out all audios, whether it's going outside and hugging a tree, whether it's just kind of watering our backyard now that it's a, to a much more happier, clean, flowing, because um, we play the leads. Mm -hmm. And then, or the beach. Uh, I play a sport called paintball, uh, there's, play games. So there's many ways you can recharge. And for mm -hmm. me, those are just a few things of what I do. And then one of the biggest way I recharge is when I do our healing services, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation or whether you come to us for Dill Dragon services, that's one of the ways one of the many ways how I love to recharge myself. So here are some using the full moon of tonight. Tonight we have a full moon, the harvest full moon. <clears throat> and usually we take opportunity in, those, in these full moons to recharge our crystals. You know, if you have a collection of crystals, um, this is tonight is your chance to really put them out there, get them recharged by the moonlight. But just because we do that for our crystal doesn't mean we could do the same. And so I'm starting from the bottom of the list, recharge your crystals. You could also make moon water. So what you do is you could grab like mason jars and just have a lid on it. You know, so then that way you don't get any critters or any, any dust in them. Like I have to do that because I have Disneyland fireworks and the Disneyland fireworks leave a lot of dust. So if I want to make moon water, what I do is put them in mason jars and then I just put them out there next to the crystals. And that's a way to recharge water in, in an energetic way. And that's also something you can do yourself. You could really just pour yourself a glass of water and just with intention, hold that glass of water and just meditate and give that charge that it needs for what you need from that water this day. And so that's another way of recharging. You can also do baths, showers, Epsom salt baths, showers, hot showers, cold showers, whatever works best for your body. And then also do a moonlight walk. This is a great opportunity to just use the full moon tonight just to give yourself that moon walk. And what's interesting about this moon, I was reading about it is, have any of you guys felt like these days past, that had just passed, including today, has anyone been feeling like they're not getting things done or there's so much more to get done and you're getting a little overwhelmed and frustrated because you haven't been able to accomplish or finish certain projects? Well, that's very normal when, when it's the full moon is coming. A lot of people will feel that way. 
And the moon is just a reminder. It's just reminding you of getting things done. Do they need to be done before the full moon? No, it's just a reminder. It's a reminder to tune into yourself and listen to, to yourself within what needs to be done and make yourself a, a much more less overwhelming list that need to be done now and things that could be taken care of later. So you don't overwhelm yourself. And another thing is give thanks. Take opportunity, like when my husband was saying, to meditate. Take some time to meditate. Give thanks for what you have. And it helps you kind of clear your mind. Because a lot of us walk around thinking of what we haven't done, what we don't have. what we It's the, all the, the negative, no, 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 no. So what we do is we give thanks. We do the opposite. Another way you can recharge is to journal. You know, we love to, you know, just journal down what your intentions are. What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to do? And that will give you the charge to kind of be able to put it down on paper and see what you can do for yourself to feel that charge to get things done. And then also deep breathing. There's something very special and unique about deep breathing. Not a lot of us do. A lot of us do more chest breathing, which makes us feel more tired, which makes our chest muscles, our neck muscles really, really tight. What ends up happening is you feel tired, you feel overwhelmed. You start not feeling healthy enough to get things done. You don't have that charge. So by just sitting down and really working on doing more belly breathing and just taking that moment to give that, you know, fill your body with that much needed oxygen and much needed flow, blood flow within your body helps you get that recharge we so much need. Meditate. That's another way we could also work on recharging ourselves, taking the time to meditate, tune into yourself. Listen to your body. Your body is telling you what you need. If you like, I've been lately feeling uh, little aches and pains on my arm. I need to address this. It's my body telling me I'm tired here. I need you to work on me. I need this to be taken care of. And I listen. So always do not ignore your body. If your body's giving you a headache, don't ignore it. Do what you need to do to address it. So tune into nature. That's another thing we were talking about. When you're able to go to the beach, for, for instance, take some time to go to the beach. Take some time to sit next to a tree. Take some time to sit in your garden. Take some time to take a walk or a hike. Tune into nature. Nature really, really helps you to be able to recharge yourself because you're taking time for yourself. And then that helps you also ground yourself. You know, by grounding, it really helps you to be able to see things in a new perspective. You know, we sometimes tend to walk around like the horses with the blinds that, you know, you could only walk one way. And so we do that to ourselves. It makes things very overwhelming because we can't see other perspectives. We can't see other opportunities. And so your, your charge is draining. We're able to just ground ourselves and open up a little more. Then we're able to see a newer perspective, newer opportunities, new ways to recharge, redo things. Re, if we have to redo a project, we have to disassemble it and put it back together. You know, it gives you a way to recharge. So there's many opportunities to recharge. And so now what I'm gonna do is take time to introduce our guest speaker because we've already gone down through a list. Our guest speaker is Ellen Wilton. Am I pronouncing that correct, correct Wilton? Yes, yes, that's correct. Perfect, perfect. M-A-M-T-B-C. Can you tell us what those mean? Yes, I'm a board certified music therapist. So those are my credentials and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. I know I've been, been watching you on Facebook of all these new ventures with your music therapy, the 
the bowls. Um, you just recently you were in a convention for uh, near death experiences. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. So we love watching our fellow presenters, uh, past presenters, you know, present presenters, what they're up to. Because, like I said, we are holistic wellness consultants. So whenever we have clients that need another kind of service, another kind of healing for their healing journey once we're you know when we know about you it's like oh this is someone you would probably be interested in yeah. in your healing journey that could help you along the way oh yeah it's wonderful that we all have each other you know it takes a village and in the spiritual community we can all you know refer to each other and learn from each other it's a beautiful thing <laughs> exactly so like you said she, um, you're a music therapist, presenter, spiritual coach, and also a young living leader. Yes. And that's the whole thing I love about essential oils. That's another way we could recharge. I like to put my diffuser on with certain oils when I need to feel better, when, especially because I have asthma. So sometimes I'll use the eucalyptus or I'll use, um, you know, lavender and other things, um, peppermint to just really help my lungs. But thankfully, I have had any issues, so I haven't had <laughs> I still put it on, but I haven't had the need because of that. Oh, that's so great. That's so great. And I do have a couple of slides, so I would love to share my screen. I yeah. don't know. Yes, um, let me just go ahead and stop share. So then that perfect. way. That's really great. So I'll introduce myself again. My name is Ellen. I'm a board certified music therapist. I, um, I work with crystal singing bowls, meditation and music. I had a near death experience when I was 12 and I came out of a coma to music. I chose to come back for healing. I chose to come back to use music and frequency. And so that's what I focus on now. And, um, if there's an upcoming show that I'm going to be in about near-death experiences, it's coming out. I'm writing a book with Jack Canfield, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. So I'm really excited about my upcoming book that will talk about not only my near-death experience, but the angel messages that have come through since I came out of my coma and then have come to me, especially in the last two years during COVID. Um, but one thing I know as a practitioner and as a just a person, is that we need to be recharged. We need to find a way to raise our frequency. And that's something that I learned very early on. Um, I'm not able to share my screen from my oh. bar. Yes. Um, just so you know, I think I may need to be made host, but I'll continue to speak here while we figure that out. Um, so it's all about raising our frequency, and we can do that many ways. We can raise, hi Patty, Patty's here. We can raise our frequency by shifting our thought patterns by mm -hmm. all of the ways that you just laid out for us. Um, but one really cool thing is that essential oils have this fantastic connection to the brain. And so we can shift our thoughts while breathing in oil and actually physiologically change the brain. It goes right into the amygdala. It is not true of all oils, but it is true of young living essential oils because the cell size is small enough that they can move through the neuron into the amygdala, in, into the limbic brain, which is where we hold our emotions and our uh, kind of our memories too, right? Yes. So, um, it looks like we're having issues with Zoom, so I'll just kind of share the oils that I'm talking about instead of sharing my um, my screen, and I'll talk about, first I'm going to talk about acceptance. So at the, if I go in the bottom here, I'm not I'm not able to share my screen. I think I I'm, need you a, a co-host already. So it's weird, but that's okay. I can talk about it too, and you can see them. So acceptance is one oil and I'm going to talk about spiritual recharging because yes, I do have a master's in counseling psychology as well. These oils do work in the brain. They're being used in amazing research, not only by NASA, but the Manel center for chemical senses because of their ability to shift emotion within 30 seconds and stay in the brain for up to two weeks. So we know we're handling the emotional recharge every time that we breathe, directly a young living essential oil as long as it's not diluted because that would affect the cell size so i'll show you how we do it we do one drop in the palm of your in the palm of your hand and then 
you activate it um, to your energetic body with two fingers on a circular motion, okay? So you have more pores in the palm of your hands and the soles of your feet than anywhere else in your body. Within 30 minutes, this oil will be has the potential to be within every cell in my body. It can detox, um, clean the cell receptor sites, allow um, for better communication and transport within the cells in my body, and it allows my endocrine system, my hormone system, to communicate better with itself, among many other things, right? So we're removing toxins. That's a physical thing. So that's recharging on that level. But as we breathe in the oil, if we pair it with an affirmation or an intention, I am safe. I am loved. I am light. I am that I am. I am. As we breathe it in, we're anchoring that intention. We're anchoring that affirmation. We're pulling in that positive energy. And we can even call in spirit guides and light workers and light beings with us. And I do this all the time. So if you have the ability to see light beings, you might see them start to congregate around me as I call them in. When I'm calling in the light, I'm calling in love. I'm recharging my energetic body. So I'm using first acceptance, which is a highly spiritual oil. It's a really powerful one. It's really good for transitions or if you're adapting to something new in your life or taking on a lot of things. Um, it has a blend of many things, including female support oils like ylang, -ylang geranium, um, German chamomile, Davana. And it is good for accepting situations, whether physical or emotional, to... Um, it's something that we have to deal with on a daily situation, right? On a daily basis. So we, we often can resist change because we don't understand that it might be for the greater good. And this is something that, this is the way I look at resistance. When I'm highly resistant to something, I was resistant to the oils. Like I was resistant to bringing them into my practice because I had a near death experience and I wanted to come back and heal people with music. It was about music. Um, but I was resistant to using them. And I found that when I'm resistant to something, it's because I have something to learn. And when I allowed oils in and started to find out what they could do and how they could enhance my path as a musician and really recharge me every day, everything changed. And for eight years, they have blessed my life in ways I can't even tell you because our frequency raises when we put these oils on our body. Young living essential oils are grown with no pesticides, sometimes even under the northern lights in soil that has never been touched by a chemical. Um, you could eat these oils. That they're that pure, right? And, they, and oils aren't regulated off the shelf. So people don't realize the difference that these really have. These oils are the highest frequency substance on the planet. On the planet. Um, so it says... Um, this oil helps us to accept more challenges moving forward rather than meeting them with resistance, anger, or resentment. And it allows us to be more open, well, and attract new things in life, whether it be people, relationships, or animals. Those who are prone to procrastinate or are in denial will benefit from using acceptance oil. And I'm going to go through three other oils that will help you to recharge in your spiritual and energetic body in addition to that. Um, sometimes... I don't know if you've ever felt this, Rebecca, like where you, you feel drained and it's, it's not necessarily because something you're doing, it's the energy you're picking up from others. Have you had that happen to you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that, that sometimes can be confused and we can think, oh, we need a recharge, but what we really need is protection yes. or we need to call in our light being. And um, one oil that's really good about this, and I know Patty knows about this one. It's like one of our favorite. This is the Energy Lightworkers Unite Oil. Like this is the one that everyone has to be using on their heart every day, whether you're going out to the grocery store and you're going to be surrounded by energies or you're working on an energetic level with someone. It's called White Angelica. That's so funny. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's amazing. I have a um, question, Ellen. Yeah. How do you difference between a resistance because you have something to learn and then trusting your intuition that it's not going to up your energy as everyone is obviously a different vibration and a different experience of learning journey how do you tell the difference for you when you're resisting versus your intuition is like don't go that way well i uh, you know i just did a really good talk about this with a friend with the difference between resistance and like a, a spiritual message 
Um, so I want to say like, we wrote it down. It was really good. There is totally a different. So when you're resisting something that, I mean, so the oils are a good example or meditation. Let's say that you are, um, you're resistant. You don't want to do it. You have other things that you want to do. Usually there's like a strong guttural feeling in your stomach. So when I feel that guttural feeling in my stomach, I find that if I shift the language to say, oh, that's excitement and it, and it, it, it accepts it. Like if I say, oh, that resistance is excitement, it actually shifts by using your language. You can shift your perception of what you're feeling and then you can invite in, is this going to be good for me? So a, a good example is my friends were trying to set me up. I went through a divorce a couple of years ago. I was devastated. And then six months later, my friends were trying to set me up with this man who is really good looking, is really nice. Like he sounded perfect. I was like, nope, I'm not going to, I won't be set up. It was a knee jerk response. When you have a knee jerk response like that, you know, there's something to learn. So I, and he's a, he was a great man. And I, but I said, no. And then finally I said, you know, I'm so resistant to this. I must need to learn something. So if the universe presents him to me, I will bring it in. And then we met naturally and it turned out he was like the love of my life, my twin flame. Absolutely. And I, you know, it's, it's just an interesting dynamic. If you shift the language and you say, okay, if this is for the greater good, I invite it in. And then you open yourself to messages, you'll receive them. It's like when we really need an oil, we either love it or hate it. Yeah, someone who really needs protection might smell white angelica and it's a very light, like floral scent. They might be like, I hate it. It smells awful. For me, it was joy. I couldn't stand it. I thought it smelled like raw meat. Um, and it didn't. It smells like flowers. Everybody loves it. It's the most loved smell in the world. But that initial gut reaction would have turned me off to it had I not known to listen to my body. So I don't know if that answers your question. That was a good one. Definitely, because it's also showing your perspective, like before you came on, um, how you recharge is kind of trusting your intuition and when, mm -hmm. you, and when you find whether it be the love of your life or an activity that's going to allow you to refresh yeah. your spiritual or physical body. Yeah. And it's interesting that fear is kind of the root of resistance and fear is always created by the story that we we create around anything. And so it's fascinating because by shifting the story in your mind, you can shift the feeling. So if I tell myself, oh, I'm, I'm afraid to go on and perform and present at this conference, but then I say, actually, no, I'm excited. The feeling of fear and excitement are almost identical in the stomach. So you can, you can shift the story. But one way to do that and shift your story too is with White Angelica because you're protecting yourself from possible negative influence and you use the oils to kind of help shift you out of a story that puts you in another place. Cause when we're in a story, we're not in present time. And that's what we need to be is to stay in the moment. So if you are a light worker, if you are energetic and you pick up other people, if you're empathic, I would say pull up white Angelica and then it will help to protect you against negative energies in the environment it will release negative emotions of greed, loneliness, rejection, shame, um, and weakness and allow protection and strength to reach into your spirit and can help you continue with your transformational work, whether it's for you or someone else. It has a lot of angelic energy. Um, the one There's one also called Angelica, not White Angelica, which I use in my practice to call in angels, and it's amazing. They're very different. This one's a light floral. Angelica's more musty. Um, musky, but white Angelica will bring angels of compassion, protection, and messages if you ask the angels for assistance. So remember that angels need to be asked to, in order to bring in their help. They're always willing to help. Light beings are always there, um, but you need to ask. So this oil has been used for emotional release work, for facilitating emotional clearing, and protecting the wearer from negative energies of those around us. So I have two more oils to share that recharge me, but I would stop for questions if you guys have any more. No, definitely. I like, I've been told that I need to use more essential oils in my work. And you just answered my question because I was actually recently told that because you could see how 
when that energy, when you're working on people, I tend to hold it in my tummy. Yeah. And so uh, my, my channeling teacher, which is my coach, she was telling me, you need to do some, you need to use an essential oil to protect yourself because you're, you're absorbing it in your stomach. She yeah. gives you a lot of love there, but it's not for yours to take. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you can, you know, cut cords and things and we can find oils that are specific to that chakra too. So, you know, let me know and I can help you figure out which ones you need because um, the oils, they, they um, connect with certain feelings and trauma and somatic experiences that we hold in the body. So I can help you find which one to use. Sure. So, um, so I'll move on to the next one, which is, is Egyptian gold. And I want everyone to know, too, that these four oils that I'm highlighting just happen to be the four oils that I'm using in an ongoing meditation experience that I'm providing. Um, if I can share that, it's monthly. Um, we do two meditations a month. I work with Jack Canfield's like, lead trainer, his master uh, facilitator for meditations. And then I do crystal singing bowls with the oils. And you can you know, use the oils at your house and join us twice a week. And they're recorded and stuff. Um, so if anyone wants to know about that, I can share that later. Um, and also these oils, I can get 24% off for anyone. And like when you get the oils, it comes with me and the community to teach you how to use them. You know, Patty knows that we have an amazing support network for spiritual work and amazing things that we do together. We collaborate, we do Reiki, we do everything. It's just like what you guys are building. And we have a community around the oils, the people that do that. So um, Egyptian gold is good for stabilizing and empowering. All the ancient oils are in this oil. So it's taken all the ones of biblical reference, all the spiritual oils, and just put them all together in this one little bottle, Egyptian gold. And so it can really, it really takes me to the next plane. Like I, I smell it and it instantly calls in different energies. So you have a lot of grounding oils like frankincense, balsam fir. Um, there's a little bit of rose auto. There's lavender, chamomile, myrrh, um, cedarwood, hyssop, spikenard, all of these incredible, incredibly powerful spiritual oils. So um, to recharge with this one, the reason it works is because um, it's uh, obviously made with oils that are used in spiritual ritual for years, and it's to enhance communication with source and the divine directly. So what better way to recharge yourself than a direct line to your source energy, your divine, your higher self. Um, so it also allows us to release negative patterning and beliefs that hold us back from making the connection to source. Uh, because at some point when we get caught up in our stories, we can disconnect from that energy and it makes us feel drained. So the gold um, is that spiritual growth and transformation that comes. I'm sorry. Can you hear my dog barking in the background? All apologies. Um, so Egyptian gold is another really good one. And then surrender. Okay. So it, oftentimes we as humans want to control what is happening, how it's happening, how it's going to be. We have a goal for ourselves. And rather than letting go, say, I want to make a million dollars. Well, rather than and say, you know, if it's in the greater good for me to make a million dollars, like that goal, it's, it's not the greatest goal, but it's a good example, right? Then we have all of these things about how we're going to get there. Well, I have to do this and I have to do that and have to do this in order for me to make my way to my goal. Instead of releasing to source and co-creating with source, because that is the goal, right? That we co-create. We're meant to have everything that we're supposed to have. This came to me in my near-death experience. It was one of the many messages I received on the other side. We are meant to have absolutely everything we dreamed of. And it's all controlled in our thoughts and our perception and our story of the world. If we get caught up in our story, we're not surrendering to source to allow us to be there. So every day I ask myself, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? And I do use these oils. Surrender oil is very powerful because it allows us to surrender the how we're going to get there and just trust that we will get there if we collaborate and follow source energy and messages. So it brings balance and calm to our emotions, releases our, our need for control and unfocused behavior. So we can release that. 
Um, it allows us to, let me see, I'll go into the details of this one. You can put it on your wrist, the back of your neck, the top of your head. This is true for all of these oils. It affects the root, the solar plexus, the third eye, and the throat. It will help you to release emotions of overbearing, resistance, controlling. It also helps those who are afraid of moving forward, and it will help us meet with the res, like meet and release the resistance of past patterns or emotional upsets. It will help you to surrender the rigidness, resistance, and fighting up to a possible solution. And when we have a more open mind and surrender to source, more possibilities show up. So that's my fourth oil for recharging. And that's why they work. They all work on different levels. They all work for different things, but they all work together. And when you use them, when you meditate, it just, it's transcendent. It is transcendent what you see, experience, and receive. So, um, so yeah. And then again, I just want to invite anybody who's interested in like joining with me. It's $3 for this meditation group that I'm doing. It's twice a week meditations for the next month. We haven't even started yet. We start in two weeks to give people time to get these oils. Um, and if you get the oils through my link, then you also gain access to the 21 day meditation reset that we did last month where people were seeing angels. We're showing pictures of angels on our pages. Um, one woman who had um, trauma because oils are really good at releasing trauma because of that amygdala connection. We spoke about the limbic brain. She had not driven a car in 20 years because of a car accident. And she did our 21 day meditation. And each day we did a guided meditation for 15 minutes around meeting with your light beings and calling in source energy, activating your intuition and spiritual gifts. And so about, I think the third week, we added a different oil every week. We layered each oil. There's called the divine destiny collection. And we layered the oils on top of each other. Um, and she got in a car and she drove for the first time in 20 years. And she came on to our little update call and we were just crying and celebrating together because that was one of, many stories. We had about 300, 200 people in that group and they were all just beautiful stories. So we, we help people through, um, the resistance of meditating. We, we help people figure out like what they're seeing and how to move through it. Cause one woman was only seeing darkness in her meditations and she was confused. So we said, ask the darkness what it needs. We guided her through the meditation, um, because we do as new meditators have trouble sometimes getting there. And she was able to receive these beautiful messages and start to see colors and lights and light beings. And it was great. So, so yeah, so that's my, those are my tips. <laughs> when is the meditation group starting again? You said in a couple weeks. Yeah. In two weeks, we'll start again, October. Um, we're just kind of collecting the group right now. And I'll, I would love to put it up. It's called um, your, your sacred space dot U S so your sacred space.us. And if people go to that page, you'll see a little bit about me, a little bit about Natalie, some testimonials. Um, and then you can join for $3 with the code love. So it's L O V E all caps. And the first month will be $3. And then after that, it's just a suggested donation. Perfect. Yeah. That's something I'm really interested. I had seen your post of the previous one and I was like oh I missed that sometimes our, our feed I don't get to see them until afterwards and I'm like how come I didn't see this earlier but oh my goodness. well you still have access to it because if you join us you get access to all the 21 days and you can jump start so perfect perfect Those that's are, great <laughs> and definitely just when we connected with Ellen and then even on Facebook I noticed most of her posts for those who got a chance to connect with her, she was just glowing because she <laughs> practiced what she preaches and it brought, it's bringing her the life she desires in the sense of a loving partner now that she has. Yes. A full, um, is it just one daughter? Or? I have three children. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Sure but only, only one of them will allow me to take pictures of her. <laughs> the <laughs> other are teenagers, so they're... <laughs> Definitely. But just seeing like the energy you're sharing now with your laughter, which actually brought me to a new awareness. They say that the purring vibration of a cat is very healing. But you ever oh. recognize the laughter is the human version of purring, the vibration. That's so cool. 
I did not know. That's a beautiful message to take away from this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then there was our, our channel, channel, channeling teacher. She also said, when you have fear, you leave no room for trust. Yeah. But if you trust, there's no room for fear. And yeah. I, like when she said that, I was like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. <laughs> I have, I have goosebumps all over. And then the message I received on the other side was that of gratitude. If we are always living in gratitude and we can find gratitude for every situation, no matter how difficult, then we truly are. There's no place for fear, dissonance, resistance, anger, frustration, because we're in gratitude. We're thankful. And sometimes it's hard to remember that it's all happening for a reason. Everything is meant to happen as it should and unfold when it does. Yeah. Exactly. In your practice, do you recognize some of your clients having a hard time understanding or feeling what gratitude is? Well, yes and no. Sometimes, it, of course, it can be difficult because it, there are difficult things that we have to absorb as humans that happen in our life, Right. But there's this whole idea of acting as if. So if we chose to come here, and I do believe that we chose to come here for a reason. We all have a purpose. I saw that. I received that message on the other side. Everybody has a reason for being here. And if we believe that and we we act as though we chose this path, this life, and we are put in the situations that we're put in in order to help us grow and expand and become what we need to be so that we can give our best selves back to the world and fulfill our purpose, then we act as if, as if everything that's happening was meant to happen. As if when my ex came to me and asked for a divorce, a financial separation, like that was supposed to happen. And I received validation of it the very next day because he said, I no longer love you. I want to divorce for financial reasons. I want to separate. And I said, well, I choose divorce. And then I received all these messages. Every hour of the next day, I received a call from someone who didn't know what was happening, but they were my support. And so I had this built-in support. I had a psychic who told me the day before it happened, um, go write a letter of love to your husband. He'll never understand what you do. Just write a letter. She, She didn't tell me he was planning this, you know, separation, but but she knew. And so I wrote the letter all out of love. I gave it to him as soon as he asked for the separation because I knew I wouldn't give it to him another time. Right. But then she called me the next day and she said, this was meant to happen. It's supposed to happen. Um, you know, you're stepping into your spiritual gifts and you wouldn't be on your, your true spiritual path if you stayed with him. And then she said, there's a great love on the other side. There's, you know, so there's, it's just, you don't always see it when it happens, but there's always something something yeah. to be made more of a situation yeah and definitely even like i could relate to your story you know and when you kind of resisted i knew with my previous husband i had that feeling like something's off something's wrong it's not working but i would try to make it work yes. and the more i tried the worse it <laughs> yeah and that's the other way that resistance can go right mm-hmm. the more Because I remember I was trying really hard with my ex and I was resisting the truth and the messages that were coming through. And the message is constantly same message every day. You can fix the leaks in the house, but you can't fix the marriage. (laughs) And and it was weird. There were a lot of leaks that we were dealing with, but I didn't listen because I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, But it was true. It was, it was just, you know, so that's the difference is identifying like what's a true message and what's resistant. If it's a true message, it's not a guttural response. It's a, it's words that come through it for me. Um, but a guttural instinct usually means something's good for me and I need to look at it. <laughs> yeah, So definitely. And it's like, even with those situations, I was so drained. And then once I actually listened to my truth, it's like there's this boost of energy within you. Like finally you're in your truth. And when you're in your truth, there's nothing that really drains you at that moment. It's like you could even breathe better. Why did I wait till this (laughs) this longer? But, you know, like you said, everything is meant to happen 
at a yeah. certain time at a certain moment you know a lot of people always tell me like I wish I would have known this sooner I'm like well it's, it wasn't meant to happen then it's happened it's meant to happen now that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, now now's the time it's like the two of you you know you you found each other and so that's the thing about twin flame energy and that was a download that I received in the last two years I get lots of downloads about what's going on, especially now that I'm open and living my authentic self, right? I'm not, I'm not hiding my spiritual gifts like I did in my marriage. But the thing about finding twin flame love is that often, in fact, almost always, you're meant to work together for the betterment of the world. And so the two of you working together brings this energy of healing and help on a grander scale. It enhances each of your own gifts. And that's what is happening now. We're being able, we're finding twin flames that were hidden from us and they were supposed to be hidden from us because it was a time of persecution. Like prior to this lifetime, if we had shared our spiritual gifts openly, we would have been condemned, but yeah. now we're celebrated. Now we're asked, we, we are needed. And so we're all like this window open during COVID because of the pandemic, we all stayed home our spiritual gifts started to expand, the frequency of the planet started to rise, and then it held a higher frequency being. So now, even we don't consciously know it, we recognize other light beings, we recognize our twin flame, and we're being brought back together to do greater good for the world. We really need us right now, all of us. <laughs> yeah. no, that's true. When COVID began, I was like, in a state of like, well, what am I going to do now? You know, we're, we were used to working on people and all of a sudden they were told we can't touch anyone. We have to isolate. And it really brought me down. It was, I was really depressed for a few weeks until, like you said, you start meditating, you start getting those messages, mm -hmm. your frequency, you know, because I was tuning in more to me. Like, why am I feeling like this? Why do I feel like but it was in those messages and that's how healers roundtable came about and now a year later yep. you know, we're going to have our celebration of one year of the <laughs> healers roundtable yep. you know we're inviting people either we're going to invite them online and or, or in person we're going to have a few people here and you know it would be great if you could join us and yes. just the sound bowls and just, you know, we're going to put it online and we're going to ask for a small donation, you know, just to help us out for that day event, you know, because we want to make it a grand event. And yeah. so just putting it out there, like, it's not going to be a big prize. It's a small donation, but it's a big help just to make this big celebration happen. And so then that way we could compensate for those who want to share those, their gifts that day. Oh, and so I'm putting it out there. And then also... I know tonight, if I could just share, let me see if I let share. Yeah, it did let me share. I don't know why. But um, tonight, what is it? I'm a host. Host. No. I, know, I noticed that he made oh, me Daddy, and I'm not a co host. I'm able to share. But tonight, I also want to promote Patty. She's having a harvest full moon circle honoring oh, all equinox. So, um, I'm going to put this information on our page too, but if you happen to watch our, you watch the replay, you get this information, but yeah, join in. We join in every full moon with Patty and Thomas, and we always walk away with it with a special message. It's a great gathering. You know, it's great to just talk about what the moon means. And like I said, tonight, definitely take opportunity to take a moonlight walk, do some moon water <laughs> nice. and talking about ellen you mentioned earlier about resisting attending very events <laughs> i like resist like why <laughs> and, now, and then it takes me a few minutes once i get past that and this show yeah. i was like oh i got it I, I got yeah. <laughs> yeah this is good for me that i need this my soul needs this yeah. well sometimes like you just want to you somehow think you just don't take the time we don't take the time to heal ourselves and and enhance our spiritual gifts and do the things that we know we should do why is that <laughs> i know i'm usually the one like we need time we need to do this and he's like why we're fine i'm like nope you may <laughs> think that but i don't feel that way like i need to recharge 
And that's when usually he'll be like, why? And then once I take him, he's like, oh, okay, I see why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to recharge, you know, because, and I always tell this to people, like I always check myself before I work on people. Do I need to address something before I touch this person? Because mm-hmm. I'm not going to touch someone if I'm not feeling 100%. Right. You know? So I always check myself. Am I 100% for this person? So that's very important. And definitely I'm going to look into the oil because that, like I said, that's a message I've received lately because things have been going a little haywire within my body. I've been seeing my holistic doctor more often. Yeah. And that was the message I got. I'm not addressing things of protection. And so yeah. I'm like, okay, that's, I got yeah. the message loud and clear now. <laughs> yeah. And that was my big part of um, healing from Lyme disease. Cause I do, I have Lyme disease. I've been in remission for seven years, ever since I found these oils, I tried other oils and it wasn't just the oils. I was using, you know, Western medicine and tinctures and a naturopath and all of that. But, um, but it was, it was a huge part of my healing. I went into remission six weeks after starting, um, using young living. So it was, it was just, it changed my life and my kids have Lyme too. So it, you know, this physical piece of it is big too. So I'd be happy to help you. Like we'll talk later too, if you want. Yeah, definitely. We're going to go ahead and stop the live, but thank you again. Make sure Ellen to post them. You, you have access to be able to post on the healers round page. Go ahead and post about the meditation and also your links. If anyone is interested in the oils, you're always, um, you could always do that on our page. Oh, and, thank you so much. Thank you. And definitely thank you for everyone who's been watching either on the live or in make sure to if you watch the replay, put hashtag replay. And any questions that you may have, go ahead and post them on our comments and we will address to we'll address them at you know once we see them. So don't ever feel like if you miss the live, you can't ask questions, go ahead and ask questions. We're here for service for everyone in any way we could help in our community. Thank you again. Thank you. So JV's is going to go offline. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Remember to stay healthy and breathe intensely. Why can we get off? <laughs> <laughs> just says copy of, oh because you're the host ellen i need you to end the, the live and do and i'm not the host anymore <laughs> it doesn't allow me i'm guessing maybe rebecca's and wow it's so funny let me see i just have to end it <laughs> all i can do is leave the meeting can you end the meeting yes Bye, all. <laughs>